Hello everyone and welcome back to the 10th ever episode of the Marymount Life Experience Podcast. Today, for the 10th episode of the podcast, we brought on a very special guest. Now this guest that we brought on today is has not only had an impact on many Marymount students, but he has also had an impact on thousands of Cincinnati residents and baseball fans around the world. Now Tyler, seeing as you are a huge baseball fan yourself, uh, would you like to do the honors of introducing this guest? Yeah, I appreciate it. This is someone who I, I've listened to my whole life uh, broadcasting the Reds baseball. I think you already know who I'm talking about. Please welcome Mr. Marty Brenneman. And Thank Luke. you, guys. Thank nice you. Nice being with you. We yes, appreciate sir. it. How is it going, Marty and Luke? Uh, good today. It's been a good day so far. All right. Well, sick. We're going to hop right into this. So, Mr. Brenneman, can you talk about uh, what the city of Cincinnati has meant for you and uh, how difficult was it to leave broadcasting behind? Well, I mean, when I came here in 1974, Luke, I never expected that I would be here and uh, announcing a retirement in January of uh, 2019. You just don't, um, in, in this business, you don't expect that because it's such a transient business. Guys are always leaving to go to bigger markets for more money. Uh, bigger exposure and all that kind of stuff. And every time I had a chance to leave here, um, I always said no because I, I fell in love with this city and, and all the things that it has to offer. Um, it's a great place to raise kids. Um, it's It's got a lot of culture. Um, the ball club uh, that I work for has struggled the last five years, but the, the track record and the history and – and everything that goes into making it the oldest professional baseball team going is is something that is not to be denied. So I um, I never seriously considered ever leaving here. I I love this town and and I think people who come from out of Cincinnati and move in from somewhere else has a better understanding of how special this place is. Um, the retirement thing. I worked for 31 years with a guy named Joe Nuxall. He and I were partners for 31 years and. Uh, and when Joe retired, he was physically unable to do a lot of the things that he wanted to do after retirement. That made a major impact upon me. And I, uh, I made a pact with myself then that when the time came that, that I retired, I was going to retire when I still had my health and I could go and do whatever I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And so um, I, I just came to the decision that 2019 – was going to be my last year. In fact, I was going to hang it up after the uh, the previous year, 18. Uh-huh. I wasn't going to tell anybody about it and do the last game of the season on a Sunday afternoon in uh, late September or the first weekend in October and call the Castellini family the next morning and say, hey, I'm done with this yeah. and I'm out of here. And they found out about it and they were not happy about that. And <laughs> so I agreed to come back and it, it worked out well because it was 150th anniversary of professional baseball. And um, it was a good year to go out on. Uh, I went out pretty much on my own terms. I went out when I think I was still on top of my game, and and I went out when I was healthy. So I had I have no regrets, and I've not second guessed myself one time in my decision. That's awesome. Now earlier you touched upon the business of broadcasting. Can you speak a little bit more to what's changed and maybe what's stayed the same since you entered the baseball scene in 1974? Very good question, Tyler. I think the biggest thing that's changed is social media. Uh, we yeah. didn't have that when I first came. And um, with the coming of social media, there should become a, a bigger sense of awareness. Um, what you do when you're behind the mic or you're in uniform playing a game and, and the awareness of where you are and what you're doing and how you're representing yourself and the people who you work for when you're away from the game. Um, you know, guys get on the road and they go out and they party sometimes, not like they used to <laughs> because of social media. And everybody's got a cell phone and everybody can take a picture of you no matter where you are or what you're doing. That was not the case when I first came. So I, I would say that social media, as in any walk of life, not just sports, but it, in anything has had such an impact on the game of baseball uh, and football and hockey and basketball, et cetera, uh, probably over and above anything else that has, uh, that has impacted my game. Um, the rules have changed. There are things that are, that are implemented now in the game that weren't there. The DH, uh, 
had, was in the American League when I came in 74. The National League obviously has never had it. Um, I Could change. Like their, I don't like their chances of not having it in the years to come. I think you'll see the DH in both leagues. Um, but they, they're, they're essentially the things that I think have, have created the biggest changes in the 46 years I did Reds baseball. And uh, to expand upon that, so – and you've been in baseball a really long time, and you have a very interesting outside perspective of the game that uh, most fans don't have, but you don't quite have the inside perspective of the player, so you don't have the bias. And um, the game's definitely struggling in a lot of ways with drawing younger audience and stuff like that. And some of the things they're struggling with are pace of play, pitching changes, the, ad the, ad the adaptation of new technology and how that influences it. And then even people as far as like Trevor Bauer, Cincinnati Reds pitcher, went as far to blame the broadcasters for part of baseball struggling. How do you respond to that? And what do you think is the biggest problem in baseball well, right I'm now? I'm going to respond to what Trevor Bauer said first. Trevor Bauer was asked the question, what's the biggest problem with baseball today? Yes. And his yes, answer it. was two words, the announcers. So if there's one thing that you could change about the game right now, it would be what? The announcers. Oh. Yep. And my response to what Trevor Bauer was – is that nobody was better qualified to judge announcers because in most starts he was out of the game by the third or fourth or fifth inning. Mm -hmm. So he had a chance to sit in the clubhouse <laughs> and listen. <laughs> he had his rear end handed to him more often than not. Um, I think his comment was completely irresponsible. I think it was completely ridiculous. Uh, he's too intelligent a guy to think that the biggest problem confronting the game of baseball today is the announcers. Mm -hmm. uh, this game has a multitude of problems, as you touched on. Um, I think the biggest single problem this game has now is trying to figure out a way to get young people back involved in the game again. I mean, when I was a kid, we used to go out in the summertime and play ball from 9 o'clock in the morning until – uh, our mom called us in to have dinner, and maybe we would eat lunch and maybe we wouldn't. Uh, you don't have that anymore. There's so much competition with other sports. Soccer, of course, has been around forever. Lacrosse is the fastest-growing amateur sport in this country right now. Um, and so baseball has – that. that's a major problem that they are uh, dealing with on, in an ongoing nature. And I don't know that they even have a, a – a solution for how they're going to turn it around, but they're spending a lot of time. Um, the analytics part of the game, I think there's some of that that's very, very valid. I think there's some that's very invalid. Um, but I think it's something that's come to the game and will always be around. I think the teams that are going to be the most successful are those who have a proper balance between analytics and scouting, actual visionary scouting, guys that have devoted their lives to the game of baseball going to high school fields, going to college fields, looking at guys that can play, and then having to put their reputation on the line by saying, yeah, you need to draft this kid here or he's not going to be able to make the grade. I think the proper balance between the two are the teams that are the most successful. I think a team that uh, in this day and age should go 80 85% scouting and 15% analytics are going to be left in the starting blocks as opposed to a team that goes – maybe 55-45 or 65-35. Uh, but analytics are here, like it or not. Um, so I, I think essentially uh, analytics has created a major change in the game today with exit velocities and, and uh, all that type of thing and wins above replacement. You almost have to have a 5 to kappa key from college to understand some of the, what seems to be numerical uh, numbers and such as that to – uh, differentiate one analytic from the other. And just going back to what Bauer said, Trevor Bauer does happen to have more influence than most Major League Baseball players. He's in the hundred thousands of Twitter followers. He's been getting paid seventeen and a half million. He's influential in the driveline program. Can you completely ignore what he said, or as a broadcaster, do you have to adjust and at least listen to what he's trying to say? It would be a cold day down under when I would take what he said about announcer seriously. <laughs> I would say to him, that's like me commenting about pitching. Uh -huh. He doesn't know anything about broadcasting. It, uh, the only thing he knows about broadcasting is he can't do it. Um, so I don't, I don't pay any attention. I don't care if he has three million followers. He, he, he has no idea what he's talking about. And, and it would have been a much better situation had he been more precise when he said the announcers. If he were talking about network announcers, 
he were talking about Joe Buck and, and John Smoltz and people like that, or if he were talking about Marty Brenneman and Jeff Brantley mm-hmm. or guys on a local level like I was. But in terms of pay, paying attention to what Trevor Bauer says about announcers, I don't give it a second thought, and I don't think anybody else in my fraternity does the same. Yeah. So uh, you have now been inducted into both the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame and the National Baseball Hall of Fame. So uh, what does that mean to you, and which election means the most to you? That's a very good question, Luke. Well, I'm not in the Reds Hall of Fame yet. That mm-hmm. happens on April, April the 26th. Yep. Um, the National Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, in, a, in, a, in a general sort of way, is probably the highest honor that anybody in my profession can uh can uh, can acquire uh i mean you're you're recognized if you're in the broadcaster's wing in cooperstown as uh, someone who uh has has risen above a lot of the other guys in the profession i mean i'm in the same in the same club with ben scully and jack buck and ernie harwell and people like that which is really special um but the reds hall of fame uh, is it may be a cut above because I will be the first non-uniform person to ever go in. Mm-hmm. They had to change the bylaws in order to put me in there. And I've never politicked for being in a Hall of Fame. I used to write letters. I wrote a couple of letters for guys that wanted to win the Frick Award in Cooperstown. And they asked me to write a letter of endorsement, which I did. Um, and I made a decision then that if that was if that was part of me having to get in there, I would never ask anybody to write a letter for me. Mm-hmm. If my work didn't stand alone and I could get in on my own merits without any help, then I'd never get in there. But I said the day on the field uh, after the final game that I did on September the 26th, um, if anybody deserved to be in the Reds Hall of Fame more than me, I don't know who it is. And I, I, it's the way I felt. I mean, if you're going to devote your whole career of 46 years to one team and you're in five different Halls of Fame already, including the Radio Hall of Fame, which is one of the biggest there is, and I can't get into my own team's Hall of Fame, there's something wrong with yeah. it. So uh, we're going to switch it up a little bit here, and we're going to talk about your fashion. Yes, we are. We have a couple pictures here of you. With Can the I kid. ask Luke Brenneman a question? Of course. It. Go ahead. Did they get these pictures from you? They did. That's what I figured. Okay. We uh, got right. them off your Instagram account, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So Let's take a look at them. We have you here, Clean, uh, what the kids call dripped out. That is, what? That's a bad term. Swag, swag, the drip. That shirt right there is clean. <laughs> it is clean. <laughs> Not only that, no, you don't agree. I don't want you to agree with it unless you think that. That shirt probably costs more than most of you guys' wardrobe. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree. I would sport that shirt if I could. These I don't shirts think are I'm, not bad right here. No, he's calling them drip. No, okay, I don't, I don't understand that term. I'm 78 years cool. old almost, Luke. What does that mean? It means it's cool. Okay, if you, if you, Luke, if you yes, think it's cool I do. and Tyler concurs, then I'm, I'm on board. Awesome. I just want to know what goes through your head when you decide I'm going to put on that shirt today. Tyler, I'm going to be dead honest with you, pal. I Every time I walk into my closet, I got so many shirts in there, it takes me a while to decide. <laughs> in fact, I just came from Blaine's out in Montgomery and bought another one today. Really? Yes, I certainly <laughs> did. I, I'm, I'm, I'm into shoes, and I'm into shirts. That's what I'm into. I don't. There's a day that goes by that I don't wear jeans. I'm done with wearing neckties. I'll never put on another. The only the only time I can guarantee that I will put on a necktie is April the 26th when I go into the Reds Hall of Fame down at the convention center. And if I could get away with way get away with wearing a tie, then I would do it then. But I'm just I don't I don't put on neckties anymore. And I wear jeans every day. And I wear nice jeans. And and uh, I'm I'm a big fan of shirts. And I want to thank Luke Brennan from the bottom of my heart for printing these pictures. <laughs> guys are talking point. Yes. Uh, now we got one question left before we get into the game of the podcast. You're sitting next to Luke Brenneman, who's your freshman grandson, mm-hmm. um, good friend of ours, and you're also you talking. Got friends? Well, yeah. acqua- acquaintances. acquaintances. She's fr- friends with <laughs> friends with my sister. So. Um, <laughs> Friends with my sister, so <laughs> that, that opens up another subject. We'll wait until later on that. Go ahead. 
<laughs> so, um, anyways, so you're talking to members of the 18-member Warrior Broadcasting Network. What would be your one advice for young people trying to enter the broadcasting business? Well, uh, uh, talking on a serious note now, I, it's it's a um, it's amazing. It's been well, let's see, 1965 is when I got my first job. I think it's hard as as hard today in 2020 to get an entry level position in this business. Now, if you go to college and you major in communications, oftentimes a uh, uh, a school will have a uh, have a department a placement service that will work to place you in a position just to get a job and get your foot in the door. Um, once you do that, uh, to begin with, you got to go anywhere in the country you can get a job. Now, when I, when I came out of Carolina in 1965, I would have gone anywhere in the country to get a job. If I'd have had to go to Anchorage, Alaska, I'd have done that. If I'd have had to go to Laramie, Wyoming, I would have done that. I'd have gone anywhere that I could find a job. There were no constraints on my decision. Well, I can't go to that part of the country. That's too far away from home. If you got that mindset, you're going to have a hard time finding a job. Mm -hmm. Go anywhere you can go to get a job. Be willing to work, and you're not going to make a whole lot of money to start with. You'll make enough to live on. And then if you have any talent at all, you don't have to worry about it because somebody will find you out and hear what you have to offer, and you'll move on. And once you move, you move to a bigger market. You get paid better. Uh, the working conditions are better. And I can tell you without any fear of argument, it is a great occupation. There's nothing better than this. I mean, it keeps you young uh, to be around athletes and, 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 and talk about the exploits of those guys on a daily basis or a weekly basis, depending upon what sports you're involved in. There's nothing better than this job. It's wonderful. Uh, Tyler, <coughs> is it time? Is it time? I I'd think like it's time. to talk about your wardrobes. Oh, oh, you want to call? Yeah, I, okay. I mean, hey, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you, you guys are fine. I'm kidding <laughs> you. Go ahead. All right. Well, we've we've made that time of the podcast. Now, uh, Mr. Brenneman and Luke, we're about to put you through a series. Is he involved in this? He is. Oh boy. Of rapid fire questions. Now, the first I love one. This is going to be targeted at. We'll, we'll go at both of you. Um, who is your celebrity crush? Starting with me. Go ahead, Luke. Go ahead. Sure. I think I'm going to have to go with Summer Rae. <laughs> Classic Ooh. answer. Um, she's actually an Instagram model. Is she looking good? She's looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> Who was mine? Yeah. Yes. You realize how far back I got to go to give you guys an answer <laughs> to this question? Marilyn Monroe. That That's my guess. She been one of them. <laughs> But I didn't limit myself only one. I mean, you got, when you you got to have a wide range of tastes. But Marilyn Monroe is about as good as I, I'll, I'll buy that. Tyler, that's not bad. All right, now uh, next question: Who's your favorite baseball player of all time? Uh, my favorite baseball player of all time would probably well, it'd be a toss-up. To be honest with you, it'd be either Joe Morgan or Pete Rose. Um, I talked to a group the other night, and the guy asked me. He said, "If you had to start a baseball team today." and you could pick the first player, who would it be? I said that would be Pete Rose. He played in more games than anybody in the history of Major League Baseball. He played in more winning games than anybody in the history of baseball. Then Joe Morgan, for two years, when he won the MVP award in 75 and 76, is the best player I've ever seen. He could do everything to beat you. He was smart. So I'd say it would be two players rather than one. How about you? I can't wait for this. This is a tough one. Boy, I talked long enough to give you a chance. I mean, I think everyone's going to call me stupid for this, but I'm going to have to go with Billy Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> so fun to watch. I like the answer. Thank you. You've got a rooting section over here. I, I, just because I, I, I have one over here. No, right? that's fine. That's fine. I, I've said before he's the best defensive center fielder I've ever seen. Now, he had problems when they put that wood in his hand, but uh, well, other than that. the first base, he was special. Well, you can't steal first, though, son. Now, this is going to be uh, more directed towards Mr. Brenneman. Okay. Now, uh, do you have a favorite game ever called? Uh, well, no, I don't think so. No, I don't. I, but I can tell you this, that I was associated with the game that is considered by a lot of people as the greatest baseball game ever played, and that was game six of the 1975 World Series between the Reds and the Red Sox. A uh, game that was decided in the 11th or 12th inning. 12th. Carlton Fisk home run uh, to send the game to us, send the series to a seventh game. 
Um, it was a game that had everything. It had uh, a major comeback by the Red Sox on a pinch hit home run by Bernie Carbo in the in the seventh inning. It had great defensive plays. George Foster throwing out Danny Doyle at home plate in the bottom of the tenth inning that would have won it for the Red Sox. Uh, Dwight Evans stealing a home run from Joe Morgan in right field. I, and a lot of people feel like that's the best baseball game ever played. But I didn't work it. I was in the um, – I was in a private box at Fenway Park, and I was being paid by NBC. I worked on NBC TV when the games were played at Riverfront, and then I was available to do what NBC wanted me to do when they played at Fenway Park in Boston. And they called me in the seventh inning, top of the seventh, with a Reds leading 6-3, to three, said go down to the clubhouse and get ready for the postgame celebration because they anticipated the Reds would win, and then Carbo hit the home run that tied it. So I never left the clubhouse. I watched it on an eight-inch black and white television in the visitors clubhouse at Fenway Park until the game ended. But that that just to be associated with that game, uh, that was considered by many to be the best ever played. Uh, next question: Describe Houston Astros third baseman, reigning American League MVP, and notorious cheater Alex Bregman in three words or less. God Almighty! <laughs> serious. You just dropped a hammer on me, Tyler. <laughs> Three words or less. Yes. Should be punished. <laughs> All right. And on to the next one. Now, uh, in a boxing match with your grandson Luke, how many rounds would it take you to knock him out? That would be child abuse, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He whipped me. <laughs> Luke, Luke, how many uh, rounds do you think it would take to knock out your grandfather? I think I'd have to uh, reenact McGregor and the Cowboy the other night and get him in 20 seconds. Who won that fight, by the way? McGregor did. He did? In like 15 seconds. Are you serious? Yeah, it was. Did you all watch it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. It was ridiculous. It took 75 bucks to see 20 seconds of a fight. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, like uh, someone said, John Ringling North, he said there's a sucker born every day. Uh, next question, who's your favorite grandchild? Oh, I don't have a favorite grandchild. I, I, I'm, I'm blessed I have seven grandkids, um, and every one of them have certain qualities that I think stand out. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a favorite. Um, I will admit that I enjoy hanging out with him. Uh, I think he's cool. Uh, what? what are you what are you squinching up your face for when I, I'm trying to pay you a compliment and you act like I'm stupid? Well, I, you're I didn't say you were my favorite. I didn't say okay, that. Okay, can we narrow it down to me or Ella? No, I, you and Ella, both uh, Ella's considerably smarter than you are, but uh, and athletically, I don't know. She may have the edge in that department. You have the Brenneman gift of gab. You have the ability, just like your dad does. Your dad's full of it. I'm full of it, and you're on your way to being. So you you, you can you can verbally match wits with anybody. Now, yeah, and did too, you haven't done very well in the National Football League postseason? I can tell you that. You better regroup big time Sunday. So, uh, who's the better golfer? Oh, he's Luke. a better golfer. Really? Yeah. I don't and know. I give him credit because it, I and I've never been able. To, I, I'm not a big fan of practicing. And going out on the practice range and hitting balls for three hours, he has no problem doing that. I think anybody that excels in that game or can excel as much as you can, uh, you have to practice a lot. And he practices a lot. And I think he's got a chance to be a very good player. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Now, the last question. Are we done already? To wrap up. I'm just rolling. <laughs> well, I mean, we could, I, I have a couple more We've here. we got two more questions. Think, don't, I got nowhere I'll to throw, go. I'm uh, tired, Luke. I'll throw <laughs> – Favorite song for both of you right now or ever? You got to go first. Man. No, go ahead. You don't have one? I do not have one. Well, I'm going to tell you what it is. You guys have never heard of the artist, and you've certainly never heard of the song, but the name of the song was in the still of the night, and it was sung by a group called the Five Satins, and it was made back in 1957 or 1958. Now, if you're a high school kid and you're dating, big time song, <laughs> nice. Uh, I'll have to put that one on my playlist. That one will have to be an add to the playlist. <laughs> you got a song? I mean, I don't know. I I guess I could just like go back to like two of my old favorites. I used to love this song, The Man by Aloe Black. 
Like, I know every uh, single word. Yeah, I know that song. Tyler, are you familiar with that song? Nope. I didn't think you were. And you had that blank look on <laughs> Luke acts like he knows what he is. Do you know? I do. The you man, do? I have heard it. I have All heard right, it. What's before, the other? That's true. Um, I also like the song Ophelia. I don't know. I nope, like never that heard one. that one. Nope. Oh. oh, that's a very good song. Yeah. Tyler, you got Come on, boys, let's go. any more? You, uh... We're rolling now. Hmm. Let's see. What okay. about favorite place to get food? Well, you mean a restaurant? Yeah, yes. A restaurant. I'm a big fan of two, and that would be uh, the Montgomery Inn. Yep. And that would be uh, any of Jeff Ruby's places. Oh, their steak is just it's it out is. of this That's world. That's correct. I Jeff, and Jeff and I go way back. Jeff really? and I go way back to the 70s. We have a... Uh, we have a long track record together. Skyline or Gold Star? Skyline, hands down. Yeah, there's no, there's no competition Who, there. You, which one do you like, Tyler? Skyline, okay. of course. Uh, Sky, Skyline. I know which one he likes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not even, in my opinion, it shouldn't even be in the talks. With I each love other. the editorial comments you guys drop. Because, I'm I mean, a big time fan of that. <laughs> Thank you, but I mean, I really get into it when it comes to Skyline because Skyline is just. It may be my favorite restaurant in Cincinnati, and to put Gold Star up in the uh, it's just it's just disrespect to Skyline's name. Now, is there is there a particular Skyline that you like the best? Because Five way. I get it with everything. Well, like what about like local? Is there a location you like the best? Oh, well, Fairfax. Well, I mean, I live in Anderson, so um, we have two locations. Probably the one out in uh, Cherry Grove is the one that we go to the most. And I know which one. I guess you all go the same one up in Milford. Up in Milford, Milford yeah. Yep. Have you ever yeah. been to the uh, Fairfax Skyline? I have not. Oh, well. Don't go there. Don't go there. Bad? No. Nope. Mil- well, Very Milford's bad. Skyline is... All right, here, I got a question for you. All right. Go, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. Junk on me. Graders or UDF? UDF. Uh, graders for ice cream, UDF just to hang out at. I got... That's a good answer. Yeah. Graders. Graders. I'm going to go UDF. Every category. Well, you know. I'm not a fan of Grater's ice cream. Really? That's just me, though. Yeah, it certainly is just you. Go yeah, ahead. that's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's an interesting take. Okay. Um, let's see, Tyler, you got anything before we drop the last classic life experience question on him? Sure. What's one player that you maybe had a really, really odd interaction with? Any stories there? Um, well, Homer Bailey. It's an interesting guy. Well, that's a nice way of putting it. Um, Homer didn't like me, and I didn't like Homer. Uh, it was just one of those things. I mean, you, you know, whether it's in whether it's in your personal life or it's in your professional life, you're going to cross paths with people that you don't connect with. And Homer and I had never connected really well, and he made no bones about it, nor did I. Um, I've had some run-ins with players in the past because I've been critical of them, and uh, we've, you know, we've had words. But I would, uh, I would say that all the guys that I've ever been involved with as a broadcaster, I, I would have to say, and it's unfortunate because I thought there was a period of time when Homer Bailey was uh, on the borderline of being a, a major impact pitcher. For whatever the reason, it didn't happen, but he and I simply never hit it off very well. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I might be completely wrong well, about this. I will this, definitely but do that. Go <laughs> but wasn't Homer Bailey known for like carrying knives around in the clubhouse and that sort of thing? Well, Homer Bailey was a very, very conservative guy mm-hmm. from Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, if he carried a knife around, and I never saw it. That's what the rumor was. I never saw it. But I would have to venture an opinion as saying that if he did, he was not the only one. There were mm-hmm. guys that. You know, we had a guy named Randy Myers who was one of the nasty boys back in the 90s, and he would come to work every day with camouflage clothes on, and he was a hunter, and he would go deep into the woods to mm-hmm. hunt, and I would imagine that he probably carried one around with him most of the time. All right, are we ready to conclude the podcast? I think, I think we're ready for this one. Um, so, lastly, this is a classic Marymount Life Experience podcast question. Yes. What in life right now would make you the happiest you could possibly be? Boy, oh boy, you guys are good. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You are really good. Um, I, that's a tough question, Luke. It is. I mean, there are a lot of things I could say. Uh, the road to matrimonial bliss has been a very expensive one for me, but I've got a, I'm married now to Amanda, who 
is is my soulmate and who's been sensational for me. I never thought I could be this happy in a in a third marriage, but I have been, and I'm I'm happy for that. Um, the thing that would make me happiest was looking, being able to look far enough into the future and seeing that um, I'm still going to be around for a while and I'm still going to be healthy even at my advanced age and that my my kids and my grandkids are going to have great health for years and years and years to come. I can't imagine there would be anything that would make me happier than that. That's awesome. All right, Tyler, thank you so much to Mr. Brenneman and Luke Brenneman for coming on the 10th ever episode of the Marymount Life Experience podcast. Now, if you all enjoyed the podcast and stuck around to the end, we thank you so much. This has been the 10th ever episode. That's a wrap. Shut up.